Anime Omake, I'm Jackie Jing. And I'm Miranda Sanchez. And true to Omake, we're bringing you some fun conversations and features with this special mini series all about anime. In our debut episode, we're going to chat a little bit about getting started in anime and how easy it is to introduce to others, along with some of our favorite anime from the past few years. <laughs> so, Jackie, how did you get hooked on anime? Okay, so when I was a little girl, we lived in China for a little bit, and when we were over there, we would watch a lot of cartoons. I remember Voltron and Ultraman and some really cool stuff like that. And then um, when we came back to the United States, my mom would get some gifts and presents from our relatives over there, and they would give us like Sailor Moon shirts and Sailor Moon figurines, and for my brother, like Dragon Ball figurines and wall posters, all that stuff. So we were always like, wow, we love how these like characters look, but we never saw them in the United States. When I was like in fifth or sixth grade, Toonami on Cartoon Network started airing and then we were like, oh my gosh, here's the cartoon characters that like we've grown up like kind of knowing about, but we had never actually seen. So then we started watching the episodes together. And like you said, like a lot of people get their start with Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball from Toonami. And that was kind of what started it all. Then we like dived headfirst in, so yeah. Oh, I'm so yeah. jealous you guys have like the early access and uh -huh. the cool stuff, like the imports. Oh, you should see some of the wall it. scrolls I have. They go <laughs> way back. <laughs> I would like to, please show me. I will. <laughs> Toonami is kind of just like this big entry point, mm -hmm. right? Like that's also where I got my start. Um, it was, of course, Sailor Moon. Yeah. And then I had a TV in my room, so very late at night when I was supposed to be asleep, like, my parents trusted me or whatever, but sometimes like, but what if I watch TV? Yeah. What if I say what's Ooh. on Cartoon Network because it's my favorite? <laughs> and then that's kind of how I got access to some of the more serious shows. Yeah. So that's where I watched Yu Yu Hakusho and Inuyasha, and I didn't ever really know what was happening in them because I watch them so infrequently. Yeah. I was just always really, really excited to see them on. Yeah. And then from there it goes to like Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, like all the like really core stuff that people know beyond the anime community. Yeah. And Adult Swim is a really good one to point out because I remember that's how we started watching Cowboy Bebop and Outlaw Star, which mm -hmm. were some of the like darker ones that I guess you could say. But yeah, man, Cartoon Network, look what you've done. Yeah. You, you started <laughs> this anime wave still here. still going too. Yeah. It's really nice. Like Toonami's doing some like really awesome stuff nowadays too. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Not only did Toonami, uh, kind of getting into the how easy it is to get into anime now, it's it's just super easy because it's yeah. so accessible, like whether it's through subscription services or free trials, because like plenty of sites also have like free access, like if you just want to watch with ads. Um, it's just really easy to find anime now, and you don't have to wait or TiVo it or whatever it was back in the day or record it. I always had like a lot of, old, of conversations with people who would buy like crazy expensive VHS to see yeah. like, a full series or something, and now it's just that's not even a thing. Yeah, no, it's really nice because like you were saying, there's so many streaming services now. Um, Hulu, Crunchyroll, Funimation, Netflix. And um, we were talking a little bit earlier, but Netflix is really like the greatest way to get into it because it's, so many people have Netflix now and then you can just hop on over to the anime category and you really just get your like pick of the litter there, so. Some of the things that I like introducing is of course, um, Ghibli movies, which are not on Netflix, but mm -hmm. granted, they're classics and they're very easy to show to people. Um, or something like Little Witch Academia. Like that's very different yeah. and very cute and very sweet and kind of an all ages thing. Yeah. And I think that's not really popular as far as anime goes, just because like there's always some fan service somewhere. Yeah. But um, that one is pretty much absent of it. It's just like fun and delightful. Yeah, Little Witch Academia is a great one. Um, I think that one's adorable. I I also tell people when they're starting off to check out Full Metal Alchemist. I think mm -hmm. that one's that's like almost number one as far yes. as like you don't like anime. Have you seen FMA? Mm -hmm. But which one, Brotherhood or the original? Oh man, That's the hard one. that is so tough. That okay. is the hard one. I usually I, go with Brotherhood. I was gonna say, I I, like I'm, Brotherhood. I'm Brotherhood too. So. I just thought it flowed a little bit better, but it's like the people who are fans of the original, they're like, when you say Brotherhood, they think it is a travesty. <laughs> Listen, I mean, yeah, I'm a fan of I both. Full Metal Alchemist is a great anime. I, I, I always recommend people start with it because I think it's got action, it's got adventure. Like we said, it's got a little bit of heaviness to it, but it's not like full blown like insanity it like Neon Genesis. Into yeah. The violence and into those heavier themes. And yeah. Of course, it starts off rather heavy because it's about, you know, death. But yes, <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert, but that's okay, whatever. If you don't know it by now. Yeah, I know. I was like, okay, get with it. And just then. the synopsis. <laughs> yeah, and um, another one that I recommend is Gurren Lagan. Um, I just felt like it was the perfect balance of action and adventure, great animation, still pretty heavy, awesome characters. So put them on your list yeah. as well. Just mm -hmm. a dash of fan service there. So oh, yeah, be worried. Be ready about. for that, but yes, absolutely <laughs> recommend that as well. So that's how we got started in anime, but in our next segment, we've got the rundown on seven essential anime that every fan should watch. 
There has never been a better and more exciting time to be a fan of anime, but with so many shows and so many genres, how do you know where to start? Luckily, IGN has got you covered with our picks of seven essential series every anime fan should watch. A boy who's lost a leg and arm, and his brother who's lost his entire body. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is in many ways a tragedy, but it's also a daring, ambitious epic that spans across generations and continents. It doesn't shy away from dark themes, and as a result, it offers something emotional for young and older viewers alike who are fans of sci-fi and fantasy. Ah! Haunting, heartbreaking, and riveting. Neon Genesis Evangelion is considered to be one of anime's hallmark classics. It's a postmodern science fiction tale, but without the rose-colored perspective that we see so often in these kinds of shows. The series is relentless, but deeply insightful, an impact that still rocks the world today as anime and other mediums continue to be inspired by what it dared to do at the time. Ghost in the Shell inspired the Wachowskis, The Matrix franchise, and much of science fiction cinema in general. It has proved to be quite ageless. It pushed science fiction into unknown territory while also exploring the politics and implications of technology over our own bodies and identities. Anime is full of school romantic comedies, but none of them do it quite as well as Toradora. The setup is standard fare, following the typical motions of boy and girl don't seem to get along, but eventually fall for each other. Toradora is not groundbreaking material like other titles on this list, but it ranks as one of our essential animes because it's fun and engaging. If you've ever seen any of Kunihiku Ikahara's work from Sailor Moon to Mawaru Penguin Drum, then you know what you've gotten yourself into. For those who haven't experienced anything from the David Lynch of anime, prepare yourself. Revolutionary Girl Utina is Ikuhara's tour de force, part postmodern shoujo fairy tale and part surrealist social commentary. It also features sword duels, kangaroos, and cows. There's nothing else quite like it out there. Perfect Blue is one of the finest works from the late director Satoshi Kon. It inspired great Western directors like Christopher Nolan and Darren Aronofsky. What makes it an essential anime is how uniquely directed it is. Satoshi Kon loved playing with the idea of time and transitions through quick visual information, and Perfect Blue is a perfect example of that. Cowboy Bebop is indisputably one of the greatest anime classics and a well-deserved one. Bebop is a strange but balanced mix of comedy, drama, romance, jazz, and good old-fashioned Western sci-fi. 20 years later, and Cowboy Bebop is the quintessential anime for newcomers and old-timers alike, proving that it can indeed stand the test of time. These are our picks for seven essential anime all fans should watch. Let us know your favorites in the comments. Regardless of what we read on lists, I think it's always nice to look back on some of our favorite anime. They don't necessarily need to be the best either, which is the point of favorites. Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk about some of my favorites recently. Um, so we are both big fans of One Punch Man. I mean, I had no idea what I was signing up for when I first started watching it. My friend was just like, yo, this is really cool. And then I was just like, oh my gosh, this is a comedy and parody of like so many action adventures that I have loved for so long. And then I just love how like Saitama, I, spoiler alert is here, spoiler alert is here. But um, just the fact that like he can just like take out people with like one punch and he like just doesn't even care. He has like all this talent like <laughs> yeah. dropping in his life. I know, yeah. big spoiler there everybody. <laughs> but it's just like, I, I just like love his character so much. And it, it's a protagonist that I have never really seen before. So like I'm a huge fan of that one. And then I love Genos too. We both said that he's just like, I, just, I know. <sighs> Cyborg man, huh. so pretty, tries so hard, <laughs> yeah, I know. but there's the whole cast, like everyone's really fun and obviously just having a good time with the show. Mm -hmm. um, who can forget Moomin Rider? Oh. Poor little boy, just doing his best. Yeah. At the bottom of the list, but the top of his own, at the very back. Yeah. Just carrying those, like, what is it, like the D-list? F-list, yeah. the bottom of the barrel heroes essentially. I yeah. forget exactly what it is, but just having those characters like that good variety is so, so good. Yeah, it's got some great characters in it. And then it's just like silly funny too. Um, <laughs> another one that we're both big fans of is Kill a Kill. Yes. 
Yeah, I mean like that seriously, so like fun. we both just like just got chills like thinking about that one. I, I love like the older animation mm -hmm. um, and I love just like how it mocks like so many things that we see in anime so much. You know I mean, and everything is just so over the top. And again, like so many great characters. I mean, we're both in love with Satsuki. Like she's just legit. Like yeah, I she's just the just baddest. Satsuki for all of my icons is because I want that like small bit of intimidation in everything yeah. I do. Oh my it's like, god. She's like looking down at people and I have this beautiful statue of her that I really love and of course an android. Yeah. Kill Kill is just really special for a lot of reasons. I feel like if you know about anime at all, like you've been hearing about Attack on Titan. I mean, um, again, this was one of the ones that has come out recently and I was like, whoa, I haven't seen something like on this level in a long time. I mean, the first episode is just jarring um, Man. of season one, yeah. I remember, so this was before I started watching everything seasonally, like mm -hmm. I watch it like week to week. Mm -hmm. um, and a few episodes had already aired. And so I watched like five episodes in one sitting because I was just like, how are you yeah. doing? Like this show has something going on and I'm very yeah. interested. And then uh, mild, mild spoilers, I guess, if you haven't seen the first season, like when Aaron pretty much almost dies, like yeah. you think he's dead. And I was, I think actually I would have liked it more if he would have stayed dead. Oh but, my uh, God, no, no. <laughs> just, nobody just likes Aaron. Poor um, Aaron. But uh, he's a little whiny. The other characters are so much better. Just to see where we've gone from season one to season three. And season three, I mean, still very heavy, but just like in a different way. Like mm -hmm. um, it's like a political drama and we're dealing with corruption now. And it's just like, I think it, it's taken a step back from a lot of the things that we saw in season one. It was like so like shocking, but I'm still like totally into it and intrigued by it. So geeking out a little bit on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I'm, I think for mine, it's really hard because there's a lot of things I consider on my top list. Yeah. So we're trying to avoid things from like 2018 that came out in 2018. Yeah. But so prior to this, um, one that I'm always a huge advocate for is Shirobako, mm -hmm. the anime about making anime. No. Uh, yeah. So it's a, it's from Studio PA Works, and it's just. This darling anime, like yeah. I said, about making anime and the process of it and like the trials of it. And so about this group of friends who all want to be in the anime industry in different capacities. Like someone wants to be a voice actor, someone wants to be a producer, someone wants to be an animator, someone wants to like write anime. It's slice of life in a way, but it's just this wonderful drama that I implore everyone to watch. Mm -hmm. It is definitely one of my favorites of the past few years. And it's getting a movie. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited. Okay, and you have another one too. Yes, yeah, so we have we don't talk a lot about movies whenever we talk about anime, mm -hmm. and so I did want to highlight a silent voice. Voice, which is one of my favorite anime movies to come out in a very long time. So Silent Voice is about this girl who is hearing impaired and a boy who bullies her and them kind of rekindling the relationship. Uh, it's very, very sad and it's one of those where you just know you're gonna need tissues and you're just gonna sob. I'm gonna you cry just let it out. with you describing it's this. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's something that I also champion as well. It's like, hey, you liked your name, so go watch a Silent Voice. Okay, <laughs> put it on the list, put it on the list. Yeah, finally for me, let's a little bit of action. Yeah, kind of there we go. Up. Okay. Uh, Blood Blockade Battlefront, or Kekai Sensen, which I like to call mm -hmm. it because that's the Japanese name and it's easier to say than Blood The title alone there. Yeah, and so this one's really neat because it's set in New York City, oh, but it's fun. like alternate New York City where mm -hmm. um, I guess there's like a bubble of just like demons and monsters and aliens and like all this like weird otherworldly things that just popped up in New York City mm -hmm. and it's just contained there. And so like, it's Sign kind of about up. society, like figuring out how to do it. So like you have this weird mix of monster demon stuff with New York. The music's just great. The action's great. Um, it follows this kid who can has this ability was given to him by like a god to see things that people can't see. So it's not mm -hmm. necessarily like the aliens and stuff, but it's just like another dimension almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gets recruited by this group of agents who maintain the peace essentially mm -hmm. in New York between the two groups of people, like the humans and then all the monsters. And uh, specifically are hunting down vampires, which are like this extra super layer between all the monsters. Yeah, it's like vampires like, now too, I'm in. everything. So it's like, no, this show has like everything. Yeah. Like, the music's fantastic. And like the fight scenes are incredible. And so like, I really, Highly recommend that one, and that's another one of my favorites from the past few years. Okay, adding that so, one as well. Yeah. Hmm. It's streaming in a lot of places. <laughs> that's all we have for this episode. Thanks so much for watching Anime Omake, and be sure to tune in next week as we look toward the present and talk about some of the best anime we've seen this year. And if you're looking for more on anime, do not forget to check out our videos in the My Hero Academia Two Heroes movie and our breakdown of the Dragon Ball Super Broly trailer. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. Bye. Bye.